thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us for the word that we received on this morning, Lord. And I want to ask, Lord, you bless us, Lord, for the Lord to bless the word, Lord, bless us to receive the word that we're about to receive on this evening. Lord, we ask that you touch and move in every one of these prayer requests that went up before you, Lord. And we'll be careful to give your name, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
to be in this number just one more time. Amen. At this time, we'd like to ask Minister Allen and the usher to come to help us receive this evening's offer. And uh, if Brother Sam would be pleased, bless the offer. my salvation, to whom shall I fear? Yes. Amen. I just want to thank God for another new year, for uh, another January 1st waking up, you know, because I didn't have to, and he didn't have to wake me up, but he did, and I just want to thank him for that. And um, 
I was listening to a commercial and JC Penney's had this really nice commercial where it said comfort, peace and joy, peace, comfort and joy. And, and that's what I I pray for some peace in this in this world of ours cuz it's just getting so crazy and like you said it's becoming dark. You know, and people uh a lot of I hear people saying Heaven and hell is right here on earth. And I'm like, where did you come from? <laughs> what Bible you study? <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> because if that's not true. Uh, and I just want to thank God because uh, I feel like I've truly been blessed. And I know I've been blessed because, you know, I got sick, maybe really, really sick just once this year, last year. And uh, I didn't, I was in the hospital, you know, last year. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. I know uh, you kept me. I know he kept me because, you know, I, I have friends who I talk to about the Lord. And, and my son, doing, like Pastor said, we need to wait out. We show my family. So I've really been trying to talk to my son. But, you know, I just have to keep praying. And I'm asking that you guys pray so I can get through to him. Yeah. So he'll listen and so, you know, he, he, know, he knows there's a God, but part of this, he doesn't believe. He doesn't believe. He believes there's a God, he doesn't believe there's a Jesus. And I said, well, if you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, they want him to touch yeah. <laughs> So that's what I, you know, I try to, to get to. So I'm just asking that you guys pray for him. And pray that he stays safe. And uh, I'm praying for my family and, and for, my, for me and my husband and our children. So I just thank God, like I said, for another year of waking me up because he didn't have to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank God. Amen. Amen for the family, right? Amen. Amen. It is an added blessing if, if you have people in the family in the house of the Lord that's saved and yes, sanctified. Right. Praise God. And you can they can pray for us and help us to get right. Lord, give 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 her son the ears. Yes. Let, let ears be linked to his soul that will help loosen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Thank Praise the Lord. I like to truly thank the Lord for being here. I like to thank the Lord for uh, like my aunt Lisa said this morning for 2022 for another year to serve the Lord and to get it right. You know, I like to thank the Lord because our growth will say, I, I don't want to give it away, but you know, this moment, uh, that I, like every every year I write some things down and I pray for that year. And I look back and see what God has answered. And truly I can say, God has answered some of my prayers. And last year that I wrote down, and one of those prayers was that my Aunt Lisa would make it to church. You know, and then I'll tell you something else now. I believe in my heart that this is Robert and James and Gino's year. Yeah. Amen. You know, because when Pastor said, pray for your family, you know, I, I, wrote them, I wrote their names down. I believe that those, those let, me, let me tell you, that, that's Xavier and Diane. It's Xavier. We're going to see them in the house of God. Amen. God, I pray for Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, um, I was, when we were praying, you know, the other night, bringing in the new year, God brought, uh, had put this little quote in uh, my mind. It's uh, for me to do. And uh, he said, pray up, get up, stand up, and go. And so I just want to do that this year and not, you know, just uh, be lazy about it or, oh, I, I don't want to get up today. I don't want to pray. You know, just do what I have to do because, you know, uh, I'm believing that the Lord's going to really touch my children this year and shake them up and wake them up. And so I just thank God for keeping me another year and protecting me and my family through all the sickness and everything that's going around that we were safe and I didn't have to worry about anything because I know he's my doctor, my physician, you know, and whenever you're sick, go to him. And I just want to thank him for keeping me. Thank the Lord for all of those.
Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you. God, we look to you, Lord God, because we know, God, that that's what this is all about. Souls, lives are being changed and impacted by the gospel of God. We've got family members, Lord, that needs this truth. Lord, because we understand that one of these days, Lord God, that time as we know it, Lord, will escape us, Lord. I'm praying that you would help each of them to be ready, right enough to die, Lord, right enough to fly, God. You've heard the prayers and testimonies, God, of your saints, Lord, concerning children, backslidden family members. We're asking you to touch them right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for it, God. We give you praise, Lord. And we're anticipating, Lord, hallelujah, their arrival. In the name of Jesus, would you give them a hand clap and praise him just for a moment, Jesus
Jesus. I mean, thankful for the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, give honor uh, to the man of God. Appreciate him. Thank the Lord for all that the Lord has used him to do in our lives. Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord tonight. Amen. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter number 6. But 
the neat thing was that particular football team uh, had a baseball team. And I played baseball with them. My T-Bird team thought I was selling out on them because I played baseball in the off-season with the opposite team, right? Amen. I wasn't selling out. I just was trying to stay fit, I guess, and I played baseball with this team. Now, I understood why they got beat by us all the time. <laughs> it wasn't that good even in baseball, praise God. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't good at all. And during that time playing baseball with that particular team, amen, I remember winning one baseball game. That's it. One baseball game. And I'm sure we had fun as kids playing uh, sports, but losing has never been fun to me. Okay. Ever. Amen. It taught me a little bit. I learned how to play outfield. I learned how to play shortstop. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think I played in the left outfield as well. Amen. Uh, now, we, we had a, a catcher. Uh, well, let me give you a couple of... Anybody know anything about baseball? Two of you, three of you, maybe four of you. All right. They got, they got that little dude that stands behind the, 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 the person that bats, right? He's the what? The catcher. The catcher. That's the catcher. You had a pitcher. I was never a pitcher. You had the first and second base and third baseman. Amen. And then, of course, uh, am I missing anything on the outfield? First, second, third, shortstop, right outfield, left outfield. That's what you had. You had the center field. There you go. You had the pitcher. Amen. And then you had the catcher. Amen. And then, of course, you got the base. Those that are, are batting, amen, they're, they're lining them up according to their, uh, yeah, their batting order. And some of that is selected on, how, on their particular skill, amen. It could rotate from time to time. But there was a guy who stood behind the catcher. This was the umpire. His responsibility was to judge the ball as the pitcher threw it. Anything between the knee and the chest. Amen. And didn't veer too far to the right or to the left. If you missed it, it was a strike. Yeah, all right. Amen. All right. Amen. And you would hear the umpire say, depends on how dramatic he was, Steve Wright won. Very dramatic. Praise God. The umpire's job description is really, amen, the umpire will maintain standards of play right. at sporting events. That's right. He will ensure rules that are, ensure rules are followed and determine penalties for infractions according to established regulations. In our text, we find the response by the Lord due to the negligence on the part of humanity. The Lord was grieved and repented that he had made man. The scripture said that God declared that my spirit would not always strive with man, seeing that he is flesh. And according to Strong's, the word strive simply means to rule by implication to judge as umpire. In other words, God ain't going to spend eternity trying to referee your flesh. Amen. At some point in our lives, we're going to have to learn how to play by the rules. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say and declare that what culture enforces as right doesn't always mean that it is right. I wish I had some help here today. Amen. Sin was the reason the timeline of individual life began to go down. No longer were they living 900 plus years. Amen. By the time we get into the text, the Lord pronounces about 120 years of life. Praise God. 
And I began to try to figure out, well, who preached to them? How did they hear from God? They didn't have no scripture text. They didn't have, amen, anything to read, ex uh, explaining to them, amen, the, the rules of the game. Praise God. Amen. But I know that he spoke to several of them. He spoke to Adam. Amen. Then the Bible says in the fourth chapter of Genesis that when Seth was born, Seth was the replacement. Seth was the substitute for Abraham. When Seth was born, the Bible said, then men begin to call on the name of the Lord. I guess there was something that happened, amen, at the birth of Seth that caused people to understand that there is a God. Anybody thankful that there is a God? Amen. In Romans chapter number one, it tells us that, amen, there is going to be a day that people are going to be without excuse. Praise God. If anybody ends up in eternal bliss or in hell, amen, they will rest assured that there is no excuse as to why. Come on, anybody hear what I'm saying here? Amen tonight. Hallelujah. Remember this. They, they, they only had one language, and there was only one people at the particular time. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's all my notes on my iPad, and y'all got to say, help him, Lord. Hallelujah. The reasoning for this, according to scriptures, was because mankind is flesh. God's spirit will not always act as an umpire. Amen. That means that, amen, you're not going to live like you want to 940 years, amen, in sin and think you're going to make it. Praise God. Amen. God says at some point in time, amen, you're going to have to face reality. One of these days, amen, as I said in the prayer, praise God, life as we know it today will escape us. Us, praise God. And we will spend our lives in eternity somewhere. Praise God. Anybody here made up your mind as Bishop taught us this morning to preach to us that amen I am going to remain committed to serving the Lord. Anybody here feel that way tonight? Amen. So God put a governor, amen, on our lifespan. Praise God. Amen. Uncontrolled flesh will destroy a people, won't it? Yes, it will. Amen. Remember that death is the result of sin. Praise God. Amen. And so God, amen, has a way of trying to bring us to a place to where we can either get it right in 2022 or get it wrong. Hallelujah. But I choose tonight to get it right. Praise God. Amen. I want to put my name, amen, in, in, in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. There are some folks, amen, that got their name in that book, amen, in that particular chapter. I want to put my name in that chapter, praise God. Because, see, according to, amen, popular Christianity, they actually believe that faith is something that you can just mentally think up, praise God. Faith is something that you can just actually sit down and think about and all of a sudden you have faith. I'm sorry, amen. They're not reading Hebrews chapter number 11. The Bible says in Hebrews the 11th chapter, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. We can find it in the text where the scripture tells us what faith is. Faith is Enoch walked with God. That's faith. Hallelujah. That's tangible. There is something, amen, that singled Enoch's life out that caused God to say, I'm going to get him out of here because something is happening. I'm sorry. Amen. Yes, we do need to speak some stuff, but faith has more to do than with how you act than how you think. I wish I had some That's the truth. Well, hallelujah, this old stuff that I can just faith is so mental. Come on, no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to show your faith. James said, amen, let me see your faith without words. Amen. James is telling us in the book of James that it ain't no such thing as faith without words. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm trying to somehow climb into Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Praise God. And I find people in there like Noah. Noah had faith, the Bible said. And what did he do? He obeyed the word of the Lord. Anybody here, hallelujah, demonstrates your faith by being obedient.
obedient to the things of God. Hallelujah. That's what faith is all about. So the lifestyle of these men could have been the standard by which their generation were held to. They lived out loud their faith. Amen. As Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, he was then charged with a responsibility. Number one was to build an ark. Hallelujah. Yes. And then the Lord gave him the detailed instructions on how to build an ark. And what I appreciate about this is Noah had never saw an ark. How in the world is he going to build an ark? God is calling Noah to do something he had never seen or heard before. Yes. So how in the world can he do this? Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't he ain't never seen an ark. Praise God. But he had he was familiar with the material. Oh, hallelujah. He did understand something about the pitch. He did understand something about the wood, praise God. But he never put it together to where he could build an ark. Aren't you thankful that God helps you when you... Oh, God help me. You might not have it all together. You might not know it all. You might not... Come on. But all you got to do, amen, is learn to listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise right. God. The call of God to Noah's life spelled... Are you ready? The call of God spells W O R K. Work. 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 Hallelujah. How I many know you can't be lazy in the kingdom of God? I mean, no, the call of God requires for you to get up, put your boots on, Sister Patty, and do something. That's what the call of God requires you to do. Come on. It, it doesn't just keep you sitting in your pew. It pulls you to a purpose. It pulls you, amen, with a passion. That's what the call of God does. Amen. We understand that the call of God for your life, amen, may, may be something different than some other people. But nonetheless, it is a call of the Lord. Praise God. But it's not, amen, about titles. Well, nope. Nor is it about fame. Yes. Yes. Doesn't matter where you call to in the house of God. Amen. It's all about reaching a lost soul. Praise God. That's what the call of God is all about. It's not about somebody holding a microphone trying to feel good. Amen. It's not about somebody, amen, singing in the choir. It's about somebody repenting of their sins, uh, being baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I wish I had some help. That's what this is all about. Uh, the reason why you turn the lights on throughout the year, the reason why you turn the air conditioner on the heater on throughout the year, it's not so we can just get together collectively and hear a good sermon. It's the hope that somebody's going to walk through the door and get in the altar and receive something from the Lord. That's what this is all about. It's not about how many miracles anybody can perform. It's about somebody getting their name written in the book of life. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. And if you believe that, would you clap your hands? Church. Yes, that's right. 
The ecclesia is God's idea to call the people out for his name sake. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So Noah could not experiment and bring in the ark what he wanted to. Come on. He had to build the ark according to the plan of God. But then what he brought into the ark was important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not talking about us trying to clean people up out there. I'm not talking about that. Amen. It's going to take people some time to clean up. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But, but Noah had to be very specific. Noah had to listen to the instructions of the Lord. Amen. If he wanted to destroy a particular animal and make the animal instinct real quick, all he had to do was divide the instructions of God, watch this, and go get two males of each kind. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, if he wanted to destroy them, that's all he had to do. God said, I want to, amen, use you, and I want you to help us in this time as we begin to go into the ark. But I need you to take two, one male and one female into the ark. Because, oh, hallelujah, amen, now, amen, we got to be careful because this old society is doing its best to put a male and a male in the ark. Come on. And if you want to destroy the ark, then get the wrong thing operating in your life. Hallelujah. And this is what God is trying to deal with. Amen. God said, I'm going to put a governor on the lives of mankind because their flesh, hallelujah, and their flesh will destroy them. If you want to keep the seed alive, then you need what? That's what you need. Right. Yeah. If you want to destroy life, get you another male. Mm. Y'all ain't here. Amen. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Noah had to build and to bring in the right stuff. Yeah. On my last page, so I'm almost done. Say so he had to bring in the right stuff. Now, now, and I, oh, help me. Boy, Let the time to get ready. This boy would say, that's enough, young man. I know my place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. This is why we got to be careful with prophet is so-and-so trying to run the church. All right. Come on, go ahead, go ahead. Wish I had some help here today. Come on. Amen. I'm not saying God can't use a woman. I'm not against Amen. A woman being used, but we got to be careful with hey, Bishop. I actually just listened to a, a voicemail this, this this morning that said, "Please call Prophet and so and so." I had to give you her phone number because she told us told us for you to call. Her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We got to be careful with that. Amen. Because as long as we, we're seeing it in the physical, we're seeing a male and a male hook up. We're seeing a female and a female hook up. And it's happening in the spirit. Praise God. Amen. And we're seeing people in the spirit, women, putting on pants in the Holy Ghost. I wish I had some help. Amen. And then they're getting up. I'm looking at you, pull me anytime. And then they're getting up and usurping authority. Amen. Thinking that, come on, how you gonna be an authority in the church and then go home and be under his authority? All right. All right. Amen. That's the truth. All right. Somebody compromise. I wish I had some help here today. Okay. Amen. Okay. The female can't ditch the male and think that it can preserve life. Amen. This is an attempt to destroy the command God gave Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. God said for them to be fruitful and to multiply. Amen. And Satan is good at confusing young boys and young girls to think that they can take anything into the ark of God. Come on. We need a church that will ride. We have one that will stand flat-footed and declare to a generation. Come on. Hallelujah. You can't do church your way. You can't do things your way. Come on. We have a God that's been directing this ship. We have a God that's been leading this ship. We have a God that's been helping us. Hallelujah. Why? 
because he's trying to get us uh, to the other side. Hallelujah. He's trying to get us to the other side. And if the umpire says, uh, amen, you can't swing that away, then you don't need to be swinging that away. If the umpire says, come on somebody, you can't act that away, then you got to be obedient uh, to the umpire because the umpire has the responsibility Trust the process. But they lied to Peter. Peter looked at him and said, Why on earth will you lie to the Holy Ghost? Come on. Hallelujah. All the umpire is asking us to do is to be honest with him. Hallelujah. All the umpire is asking us to do as we live and as we march with him, simply to be honest with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't no sense in you lying and thinking you're going to make it somewhere. Come on. The further, the longer you lie, the further you go down. Hallelujah. And see, he lied to the Holy Ghost. Peter said, all right, since you lied, guess what's going to happen? The umpire is taking you out of here. They escorted him out, didn't they? Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to stay up here. Amen. And then his wife. Come on, wives, tell the truth. Don't let your husband lead you down a road that could kill you. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Come on, tell the truth. And I'm not saying that's the case here. I'm just saying, man, we got to tell the truth. Come on, Radio Land, tell the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell the truth. And she comes in and he, he says, how much did you sell it for? She said, so and so. He talked to her before he got to church. Uh -huh. He said, listen, honey, when you get there, I want you to lie to the preacher. Yeah. Hey, man, you got to be careful what you're talking about mm -hmm. at home. Come on. I want my family to get this thing right. Hallelujah. I want my family to live this thing out loud and to live it right. Praise God. So I'm not going to tell you to lie to any man of God. I'm not going to teach you how to keep stuff under. Amen. Hidden so you can lose your life when you walk in. I'm telling you, if we have some of that happening today, I guarantee you we'll have an apostolic move of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The Bible said in that time, amen, when they heard about those two deaths, that fear came upon all of them. Come on, that's what we need to get back into the house of God. We need some fear to get back into that. Is this all right? We need fear to get back into the house of God. Lift your hands unto the Lord and say, God, somehow help us to have a fear of you. Not, not scared of him, but in honor, a reverence. Unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Noah's life is a picture of just simply obeying God. Simply obeying God. Hallelujah. Amen. Something else that happened, and I know people are doing this kind of crazy stuff today. I am thankful that the Bible in the New Testament said that you got to have uh, the man of God should be blameless and husband. Oh. One more. Lives? One. One more. Thank God for just one. <laughs> Amen. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. Amen. Hallelujah. One, two. You got folk that want to try to marry five and six different women today. Oh yeah. All right. Come on. Yeah, they do. But pre-flood, pre-flood, Noah took his wife oh, into the ark. In, in the ark. Come on, somebody. Pre-flood, Noah took his one wife into the ark, his son, and their three wives went into the ark. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Because Noah, amen, understood something. I've got to listen to the umpire. The umpire, he knows how to call the game. The umpire, he knows exactly what he's doing. I don't know tonight, maybe God is trying to get somebody, amen, here tonight to understand if he destroys Not 
Not without a chance. Not without an opportunity for them to be saved. The great umpire wants all of us to be saved. But there are things that he knows that won't fly right in the baseball game. You can't tell the umpire how you're going to play the game. No. No. Have anybody ever seen somebody get sideways with an umpire? <laughs> I'm watching people every day get sideways with the principles and the precepts and the rules that the umpire said will preserve your life. Hallelujah. The umpire is right. He knows exactly what he's doing. Look at somebody and say, he's been doing it for a long time. He knows how to give you life. He knows how to preserve your life. He knows how to help your life. It's the umpire. He's been working at this for a while. He's trying to make sure that you play the game right. He's trying to make sure that you walk right. He's trying to make sure that you talk right. Praise God. They've got rules. Amen. Now, I know sometimes in today's games and baseball games, umpires probably talk nasty. That's why we're not going to compare the umpire of the baseball game to God. But the reality is they ought to have some kind of standard themselves. Hallelujah. They ought to be able, amen, to make sure that they keep their mouth clean. Thank God that we serve a God that knows how to obtain standards himself. He's not going to tell us to do something he can't do. He said, be holy for the Lord your God is holy. He is our perfect example. Amen. He maintains every standard that he set because he don't want you to break the rules. He wants you to fly right and make heaven your home tonight. Yeah, sir. Amen. That's right. Perfect. So, so, so you swing the bat and you miss the ball, uh -huh. you're going to hear the umpire say, that's a strike. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What that means is, if you're not paying your tithes, is that right? Right. That's a, that's a steep wide one. <laughs> How you doing? Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. And if you got an ugly spirit and won't repent of that ugly spirit and all the, way, all the time trying to talk down on somebody else, the umpire is going to look at that pitch and see that ball coming and say, stop right to. Come on. You better be careful, praise God. Because the umpire, he knows how to call the game. Hallelujah. That's why you got to learn. I got to learn how to keep my spirit right. Amen. If I ain't got nothing good to say, then I'm probably going to go sit down and I'm going to keep my mouth shut and I'm going to pray because I don't want to strike out the game. I want to get through the game. I want to win the game. Amen. Being firm is not being mean. And people, in fact, our society, again, has, has, listen to me, has sissified the men and have made the women strong and boys like, amen. And they're trying to make it feel like that every time somebody stands strong on some doctrine or something that they believe the Bible is, amen, they try to make us out to be mean people. We're not mean people. We just love what the umpire is telling us to do. We want to get this right because if we can get it right then you can go to heaven right that's the truth amen so I gotta get this thing right hallelujah you're right uh, brother Rose uh, Friday night I don't always get it right I wish I was perfect yeah. but I can always get it right Every time I cross a T, it looks nice. <laughs> Every time I dot an I, it's a perfect dot. Right. Yeah. That's not the case with this old man. I get it wrong sometimes. Yeah. 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 I'm thankful when I hear the umpire and I swing at something and the umpire say strike. I ain't mad at the umpire. I say, I missed that one. Yeah. 
I got to pay attention to the next pitch. I got to pay attention and watch and make sure that they don't try to go curveball. Amen. Because sometimes they'll throw things at you, amen, that you shouldn't even be swinging at. Praise God. Amen. Because, amen, if it doesn't, listen, it's got to be in between the knee and the chest. As long as it's in between there. And if it's between there, it can't be too far to the right and it can't be too far to the left. If it's too far to the right, if it's too far to the left, then it's a ball. Don't swing at the ball. Amen. Come on. The only thing that's going to come across this plate is righteousness. It's holiness. It's good preaching. Come on, somebody. Those are the things that you should be swinging at. Come on. Don't swing at worldliness. Don't swing at ungodliness. Get yourself out. Amen. Of those sites where you can lose your life. Strike. I don't want to strike out. Amen. Amen. I wasn't really a good baseball player. That's why I stuck to football. In basketball, I only played one year, and, and and I can blame the whole team instead of myself. Hallelujah! <laughs> the team was sorry, <laughs> and all we had to do was hit the ball. <laughs> How can you lose? And all you have to do is just hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. If you're going to hit a pop up, make sure it goes so far that the outfielder can't get it. Praise God. Right. If you're going to hit it straight down the line, make sure the first baseman can't get it. At least you can get to first base. Come on. That's repentance. That's baptism in Jesus' name. That's the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, at least you can get to first base. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then you get somebody up that know how to back. Praise the Lord. And they know what to swing at and what not to swing at. That's why I thank God. I'm trying to get out of the way. I thank God for elders. Uh, he's been there. He's done that. Uh, he knows what to swing at and what not to swing at. I think I can make it home with you, Bishop. Come on, somebody. I think I can make it home. I think I can get to the house. All I need him to do is just get up to the plate. I got the first base. I got the legs to get all the way home. Because when I get the first base, I need somebody that can hit. Can you hit good? I need somebody that can hit. Come on. This is why you got to be careful of who you hanging around with and what you're listening to. When you say, I don't hang with nobody. But today's world, you can hang with everybody right here. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. I don't have to go nowhere to hang with anybody. I can hang with Jay-Z. I can hang with Beyonce. I can hang with everybody right here. I can hang with Kanye West right here. Praise God. I mean, that's the example of, and I don't want to hang with any of those guys because they're going to mislead me. Come on. Amen. Because you are the people you hang with. I wish I had some help. Praise God. That's why the church is important. When you get into the house of God, you just got to first base. But when you get to second base, you say, I'm going to hang out with the church. I'm going to fellowship with the church. I'm going to hang. Come on. I'm not just talking about anybody at the church. I don't want to be around the gossip at the church. I don't want to be around people that ain't praying at the church. I want to be with somebody, Sister Wogu, that's on fire. Amen. Amen. I want to be with somebody on fire. I don't got time to play games. Hallelujah. I, I know how people are. Amen. We're sometimes. Hallelujah. We wishy-washy. We two-faced it. Hallelujah. I know how people are. I don't got time for all of that. Amen. I don't. I'm sorry. And I, I'm not going to change that. I don't have time for all of that. I want to get home. I want to make it all the way home. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Oh, yeah. I'm not hanging out with you if you want to gossip about everybody. I'm not hanging about with you if you're going to talk about me and then talk about somebody. I ain't hanging with you like that. Amen. We 
can't ride like that. I'm sorry because I want to make it home. The umpire wants me to get all the way home. He wants the game to be played right. Is that right? Yes. The Lord said my spirit will not always strive. I'm going to cut it off at 120 because flesh without any good parameters will destroy the person. You can come to church and still operate in your flesh. The umpire is trying to get you. Every sermon you hear, it's the umpire. Trying to get you to play by the rules. Amen. Every message you get is the umpire trying to get you to play by the rules. Hallelujah. How many want to play by the rules? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You stay there, huh? Somebody said, there's a nice field over there. <laughs> and, 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 and God bless you with a beautiful field. But then I looked at him and said, well, it took work to get it to where it is. Amen. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. I gave it to him. Yeah. But it took some work. Contrary to, 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 to popular Christianity, they think that you're just saved by words mm -hmm. or not by words. You're not saved by words. It's like the field. You just got the field. That's right. That's, that's, that's what it is. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to dress right. You don't have to live right. You don't have to look right. It's just grace or you saved. You Listen, you can't be saved without grace, but you can't be saved without works either. That's right. Grace requires God's help and yours at the same time. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. When I got into this, I had to pull my pants up. What would it look like if I was still running in church talking about praise the Lord? I'm going to be preaching here, would it? No, sir. <laughs> what would that look like? Praise God. Amen. Now, how are we going to keep following folks that call themselves Christians, but they look like they're so worldly and thugs? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Amen. Come on. Mm. How? The umpire said, that's not the crowd to be following. That's not the people you keep liking their pages. Come on. That's where we live. We live in a page world. Praise God. All you got to do is click like. And all you got to do is follow. That's, that's it right there. I can follow you right here. How you going to keep following people, amen, that doesn't look like God, that doesn't talk like God? Come on, amen, because if you clean up here, you'll clean up out here.
That's the truth. Tell it. So I had to clean it up because I want to win the game. The umpire, he said, I'm not going to always strive. But man, that word is judge, umpire. I'm not going to let you continue to live like this uh -huh. for a long period of time. Right. You're going to have to get it right in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody going to help me get it right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get it right. Oh, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What are my steps, Lord? What are my steps? Oh, praise you.
Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. I will make our home someday. But I want to tie it in something else. It ties also to success. If you want to be successful in this life, you're not a great game, right? Mm. in the Lord. I got five checks coming every month. Well, you know what? Amen. Play the game. I right. played the game right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it's people that Praise don't realize how important it is to learn how to play the game right. Amen. What I'm talking about is life in itself. Yes. This life. Live for God. Yes. You live for God, ain't no telling what God can do for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Yes. Praise God. I'll yes. tell you something. There ain't no telling how God can just bless you magnificent. Praise God. Good message. Ooh. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. That message was heard by somebody on the internet that they needed to hear it. That they were playing the game right. Amen. I share this with my grandson. This is my oldest boy in his first year of college. He came home sitting in the living room. And he turned to me and made a statement. He said, Dad, because some of the decisions that you made, now one of your children will live in poverty. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And one of the best decisions I made was to repent of my sins. Amen. Amen. Now,
teach you how to play the game, right? No. No. But get in the book. That's what I did. I even got in the book on how to raise my kids. I wanted to raise them according to the word of God. Praise God. And that's what I did. Praise God. And God has blessed us in my life for that. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's take a moment and thank the Lord for this message, this word tonight. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Thank you. What you had to I do. Check everybody. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I don't have to sell the away from hell, man. Let's go direct to God. <laughs> yes. Good for God. He owns everything. He can help you make it through life. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can help you make it through life. So yes, you, you'll be able one day. Amen. There are people right now, 64 years old, 70 years old. Amen. Guess what? They, they, they live the waste of life, and they ain't got nothing coming in. Mm. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. God. Young people, this is the time to make right choice. Right now. Right now. Right now. Amen. My first retirement, I was 50 years old. No, 37. 37. I retired. The second, I was 50. Praise God. Yes, yes. How could I do that? Let's live for God. Amen. Let's live for God. Praise God. And there's no way in the Bible where it says you retire. And I'm just keep on living for God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Will you clap your hands up the Lord? Thank you. 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 Thank you.